In the last videos, we looked at ionic bonding. Now I want to talk a little bit about covalent bonding. Hopefully you recall that the word covalent literally means sharing valence electrons. Unlike ionic bonding, where electrons are transferred, leaving the metal and going to the nonmetal. Here you'll have two nonmetal atoms sharing electrons back and forth. The question I want to focus on today is, does sharing mean that electrons are shared equally? Another way to ask the same question is, can bonds be polar? Because if electrons are not shared equally, that means electrons will be spending more time around one atom than the other. That means one atom will have more of a negative charge, and one atom will have more of a positive charge, depending on if the electrons are spending more time or less time around them. Hopefully you recall the concept of electronegativity. Electronegativity is a value assigned to elements that shows you how strongly they will pull or attract electrons within a covalent bond. It's a trend from the periodic table, and it turns out that if atoms do have different electronegativity values, then electrons can be pulled and shared unevenly, leading to polarity in bonds. It's the difference in electronegativity values that we're going to find most helpful. Electronegativity is a periodic trend, much like ionization energy and atomic radius. And in fact, they're all related. We know that atomic radius will increase as you go down a column and decrease as you go down a row. And we know that ionization energy will decrease as you go down and increase as you go across, because the larger your atoms, the easier it is to lose electrons. Electronegativity follows the same trend. The smaller your atom, the more of an attractive pull it's going to have on electrons. So cesium and francium, which are really large atoms, have very little pull on electrons, so they have very low electronegativity values. Fluorine, a relatively small atom, has a really strong pull of electrons and has a really high electronegativity value. Notice how the zoomed dolls did not include the noble gases in this chart. That's because electronegativity is all about covalent bonding and the attraction of electrons within a covalent bond. The noble gases are noble, so they tend not to form any bonds. So talking about how they would attract electrons isn't really a useful exercise. In your first year of chemistry course, you were probably taught that bonds are either ionic or covalent. And that's because when teaching at the introductory level, it's easier to give absolute rules, make things nice and black and white. But in reality, bonds can either be increasingly or decreasingly ionic. We can talk about a bond being purely covalent, meaning that the electrons are shared nice and evenly. We can talk about a bond being ionic, meaning there's no longer a sharing of electrons. The electrons are being taken or lost. And then there's this big gray area in the middle where bonds are polar covalent. Electrons are being shared, but not being shared evenly. The distinctions between a bond being polar covalent, purely covalent, or ionic are kind of gray and muddled. There aren't really any hard and fast cutoff points. It's more of a spectrum of bonds being more or less covalent or more or less ionic. As a guideline, chemists often use a threshold of 0.4 to separate a bond from being polar covalent and nonpolar covalent, meaning that if you look at the difference in electronegativity values of 0.4, then we can say that you're getting into the polar region. Then a threshold of about 1.9 to 2 will get you into the ionic region. So if you have a difference in electronegativity of 2 or larger, you know your bond is ionic. But again, these are kind of guidelines. The reality is not so simple. It is really a sliding scale between being more or less covalent or more or less ionic. We can place chemical bonds into three general categories. We can call a bond purely covalent if the electrons are being shared evenly. This would happen when elements have no or very small differences in electronegativity. Again, that threshold that we generally use as a guideline is a difference of 0.4. Polar covalent bonds mean that the electrons are still being shared, but now they're being shared unevenly. If you have a difference in electronegativity of around 0.4 to 1.9, we consider the bond still to be covalent, but just polar covalent. And then ionic means the electrons are no longer being shared. One atom is losing an electron, and another atom is gaining an electron. And this is what we looked at in the last couple of videos. When talking about electronegativity, you're usually looking at a difference in electronegativity of around 2 to consider a bond to be ionic. 